we're pulling in at 80 straight episodes. So it's time to reflect on the channel, talk about the future of it, and what the hell's up with seven string basses? Metal Bass Monday. So if you're new here, welcome. This is the 80th straight show of Metal Bass Monday, and we're going to talk about where it might be going from here and some changes to the channel so you can get in on the ground level if you're new. Please do that like, subscribe, share, uh, you know, all that stuff. Uh, it does help out the channel, and you'll find out how crucial that really is when we get to talking about it. But first up, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody. I mean... This definitely took me back when I realized how many we had done, and that doesn't count the live streams, and uh, that's a lot. We've been hanging for a good while, so cheers to all of you. It's much appreciated. So I think the first thing we're going to talk about is the new Bass Beast on the lab table, and then we'll talk about the channel. So let's get at it. Okay, seriously? Yeah. What we have here is a seven string. It's an Ibanez BTB series. Uh, this kind of started out as a lark. Uh, I played a seven string a long time ago for a very short time. But, you know, it, it didn't really stick with me. Uh, I decided not to pick one up. But uh, when I saw this come up, it had a few features on it. And I just hadn't tried an Ibanez in quite a while. So I was curious about it. And there's some things with seven that I thought would actually have a purpose. Most people see a seven as just a soloist tool, and I think that's really limiting it. It's just like a six string or anything else, so I don't uh, I don't really see that it's going to be that much different. The I gotta admit the the overall fit finish the neck is you know manageable and yeah I'm, I'm pretty impressed right out of the box. Again, I haven't tried Ibanez in quite a while, but uh, this one surprised me. So this is a bit more of an unboxing type of thing. I'm going to do a full review at some point. But the other reason that I wanted to show this thing is I wanted to kind of drive a point home that I've made on the channel a number of times. And that is get your technique together, learn your scales and how to navigate a neck, and you're always prepared. You know, it's because of the system that I use. Don't necessarily have to use it, but I did one called Skeleton Key. I teach it privately. You know, I've offered the course a number of times. If you watch the channel, it's four lessons in a book type of thing that I navigate you through. And it's how to memorize and understand your whole neck and be able to play in any key. Uh, when you approach an instrument like this, having tools like that under your belt, this makes no difference to me. This is no different than playing a four for me because I can visualize my scale patterns all over the neck and I could have a 30 stringed instrument. So... I'm not sitting here to like, you know, hey, look, Rodney. What I'm saying is it can be really liberating to have this stuff under your belt. You know, having good hand positioning and knowing your scales and having them together, I can pick any mode or anything that I want and know what it is going across the neck. And hit every note. And I, I've maybe spent an hour and a half on this thing just got it in. So I think it's kind of proof positive how much this stuff pays off and how much more versatile you can become. So spend some time with that. But really with this, yeah, it's it's not nearly as difficult to play as you might think. It <laughs> It's a very smooth, comfortable kind of neck, and if you've ever played a six, it's probably not that far off. The string spacing is a bit closer, and yeah, not as shocking as you might think, but definitely, you know, getting yourself together and being able to know your scales and your neck is going to pay off for you. <laughs> Not a big transition. It's very cool. And I've already got some ideas for it. It's not a solo 
instrument only, but partly wanted to show this off and, you know, new toy, new cool stuff. Talk about the realistic part of it because a lot of people are hesitant for something like this because they don't get one in hand and they don't know what to expect from it. And the other is, again, make that point. Learn your scales, get your hand positioning down, have good technique and everything. And yeah, nothing stands in your way. So let's chat about the channel. So about the future of the channel. Uh, again, with it being the 80th episode, and I've been watching and formulating some thoughts over the past few months, and I figured this was a good anniversary to kind of look at it, assess, kind of take a look at the past and where things need to go for the future. I've been noticing some trends and things, and really it got me into a longer space thinking about what you guys want from the channel, what I need to be providing, and what the best method to do that is. The raw facts are that I have been seeing the numbers for Metal Base Monday going down. And not just, you know, over a couple of weeks or anything like that, but pretty steadily for a little bit. So the message that I'm getting pretty clearly is I'm not covering this type of stuff that you guys are as interested in. So I need to get back to the lab and start considering that and see what else I can come up with. I think I know the direction to go in, but I really want to get your input on it. Uh, one of the things especially I've noticed is when I'm doing the things like Shred Shed and things like that, not so popular. So, uh, and I did take a look at that, and it seems like while the main audience here uh, doesn't tune in for that type of stuff that much, uh, the people who request it the most are either current or past students of mine or patrons. So maybe this lesson type of stuff kind of takes a not as regular type of output, but maybe I go into some longer form extended lesson things where we really go deep into it. And that's something for the patrons. And I'd love to give them some more content too. They certainly deserve it. And that little aside there, thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. And it's times like this when I reassess and things, it really makes me appreciative that people want to back the channel and things, and it pushes me to try and do better and think about how I can best keep the channel going. The other thing about it is, is just, it does come down to some flat out hard facts too about Metal Base Monday and that if the numbers are declining and uh, there isn't a lot of interaction or things, it hurts the channel more than you might realize. So it means I really have to look at making some changes. Uh, the reason, and you may not know this, why so many creators, and I really try not to be heavy handed about it, about the like thing and, you know, basically turning an entire episode into somebody just saying the word like over and over. But when there's no interaction on an episode or one just doesn't do very well, and there's not that many likes or any comments or anything like that, the way YouTube sees that is that they go, oh, this guy's content is gradually getting worse over time. It's not that people just aren't watching it or it wasn't a topic they're interested in. So even if I put out something really killer the next time that everybody's interested in, YouTube looks at what happened last time and goes, well, we're not going to push this one because this guy just isn't putting out good content. So one bad episode tanks the ones that come after it and you get, you know, continual low numbers over a certain amount of time and basically you bury your channel. And... So for the survival of it, I have to take stuff like that into account. And that is genuinely why I say it really helps. And if you want to keep the channel going, the best things you can do are like, subscribe, and share. It's not a gimmick. But that aside, that's not really what I want to talk about. Uh, so I really started looking at Metal Base Monday and going, you know, there's 80 full episodes here. And that's a lot of back content for people to go through. Is this a format that's really working out? And some considerations came up in that I don't think I've taken into account how often I have to sideline other content that I'm trying to work on because there is this show that has a due date. So I may be going, hey, I've got this really cool idea. I want to teach this one lesson or I want to do a performance I think you guys would enjoy. 
or something like that. But then as soon as I start working on it, it's like, okay, I've got three more days and I have to have a show on Monday because there's that hard deadline. I have to be able to create and put something out. It's not like I can sit on it and go, well, I'll put it out Tuesday or Wednesday if I'm not happy with it or things like that. Nope. Got to be there. So it's really upsetting or, you know, it could be really a, a stress thing too at certain times where I filmed a whole episode and edited it down, watched it and gone, this is crap <laughs> and just really not liked it, scrapped it. And then it's 1 a.m. Sunday night and I'm still putting stuff up and trying to get things finished to make sure the show goes off on Monday. And with those, that kind of time constraint, I'm not sure that I'm always putting out something as in-depth as maybe you guys want, or that I'm able to address longer topics or more varied topics because, you know, there's, there's a certain form factor for Metal Base Monday. And so maybe it is time that, you know, and I'm not sold on any of these options, please chime in and tell me, but I've considered... Maybe it's time to put that show on hold and me to put up other content at different times during the week on very different topics, completely different things, stuff like that. Side note as well, especially with the podcast with Alfie debuting here soon, finally, uh, that I'm going to have another weekly commitment as well, and that's going to put a time constraint on me. So, you know, really thinking about that too, but, you know, maybe Metal Base Monday goes on pause for a bit and... You know, I just start doing other content sporadically through the week on other topics and other types of shows that I've been wanting to do more of. Or maybe Metal Base Monday becomes bi-weekly or once a month. Or uh, maybe Metal Base Monday becomes just not a show, but a live stream. That it just becomes, you know, once a week or once every other week. I just pop on and you guys ask me questions or we talk about the other shows I've put up, things like that. And it just stays our hangout because I do love the interaction with you. It's really been so much fun over the couple of years I've been doing this to talk with you guys. And I've learned a ton through you and seeing things from different perspectives and stuff. So that's been great. And I know I'll miss that if, you know, we don't keep up some kind of live stream or interactive type of format. But so those are the things I'm looking at. But as far as a regular weekly show with subjects and things, I think, well, the numbers are telling me flat out, it's time to make a change. So, like I said, I'm not completely sold on one of these options, but I'm examining them and with your input and what I think the best plans are going forward, I think it's time to do 2.0 on the channel and make it better and serve you guys more because obviously I'm... I'm not living quite up to that right now. So so on the other side of this, I do see an opening for me to be able to do, again, longer form content or to really get things right. Um, you know, it, I don't feel that something's as well done as maybe it should be or it needs another day or I want to add in something that I didn't think about until the last minute or something like that. I have that fudge time and that there's no predetermined day it has to be out. You know, if I plan on it on Monday, but it happens to pop up Wednesday, but it's a better for a result, I think everybody's happier that way. I feel better about putting it out, and you guys get the better product. So I think there's a lot of benefit to it. And in the end, it also lets me have a, little, a bit more flexibility in that I can just create content as I go, not things that have to be put into that end format that fits within a certain time constraint and has, you know, this type of this piece here, this piece here, this piece there. I can go more in depth on it, not having any other obligations, or I can just experiment and we can see, you know, what's new and what's out there. Because what I do when I do a lot of these shows is I actually watch a lot of other creators' videos and I try and make sure that I'm not repeating something. I'm always looking to give you guys something different than you see on the other base channels. I don't want to go to base the world or, you know, Patrick Gallagher or something like that and see them doing the same lesson because then it's just the Rodney version of something you probably already watched. And, you know, who needs that? It's, you know, we're looking for something a little different and for me to give you guys something you aren't getting somewhere else. 
So that's my aim. But again, let me know your thoughts, ideas. I'm totally open to all of it. And going forward, I would love, since I started the channel with only my own input, it would be great for you guys who've been along for the ride to have some input as to where it goes. So let's talk about it below. Let's get into it. And I think it's going to be a good thing. I think uh, the only things that don't change or grow are dead things. So with 80 episodes for you to peruse, and I would love to give you the invitation here to go back and look at that stuff if you haven't seen all 80. There's a lot of good information in these episodes that I think a lot of people have passed over. I still get questions and emails from people on a regular basis asking me questions I know I've covered in these episodes. So if you got that hankering and you just need one, you got a whole back catalog right there. Again, not saying it's going away completely, but I'm not sure in what form it'll be around. So again, thank you so much. This has been awesome. and. The channel's not going anywhere. <laughs> We're just going to move in a new direction. I just wanted to show some appreciation, show that I do listen and I pay attention and I look at the numbers that you guys give me and your feedback through the likes and the comments and things like that. So I know what you're digging, what you're not, and try and find out what I can do to address that. So thanks again. I know I've said it a few times, but I'm genuinely appreciated. This has been very cool, and I'm looking forward to more bass, more metal, and more awesome times hanging out with you guys. So I'll see you in the comments below, and I will see you on the next one, whatever form that takes.